you, Mr. Acting Speaker. Mr. Acting Speaker, I just rise in support of the bill, the Magistrates Court Nuggle Court Amendment Bill, and uh, in doing so, just uh, acknowledge that this bill delivers on the government's election commitment to, to our Aboriginal Affairs policy to legislate to, uh, to legislate to protect and strengthen our Nuggle Courts, so that they have a formal and recognised place in our justice system. Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, any uh, form of justice system or criminal justice system must ensure that it actually achieves what a key objective, and that is an objective to actually reduce crime in the future. Mr. Speaker, in doing so, if uh, in doing so, we need to acknowledge how do we how do we actually get those people who offend for the first time or the second time, those people offend. How do we get them to ensure that they do not offend again? I'm reminded, Mr. Speaker, of a conference I went one, once in uh, WA some years ago, and the guest speaker of that conference was the actual police commissioner of the day in that conference. And he asked, he posed the question, "What actually, what is the biggest factor to reduce crime in any state?" And and everybody expected the police commissioner to say, "More police," and he said, "No, no, more police actually reduce, or actually." Uh, actually increase the clear-up of crimes. In other words, you have more police. If a crime is committed, you're more likely to actually apprehend the offender, etc., etc. He said, the only thing to do to reduce crime is to instil in your population you know, the cultural values that crime is the wrong thing. Crime is the wrong thing. And it sounds simple, but the reality, I think, I think he's right. Um, when we, people do the right thing, when essentially they have the capability to do the right thing and there's a context of doing the right thing. And by that I mean we have a culture where we actually support certain behaviours and do not support other behaviours. In Western society, we've, de we've developed the criminal justice system as a way of dealing with those people who do not deal with, uh, do not, who do not deal, who do not behave in a way which we believe is appropriate in our society. And and that's an accepted practice going in for centuries now, Mr. Mr. Speaker. In other cultures, though, they deal with this, with this behaviour in a different way. And it's important that we understand that anything we do in the criminal justice system must be always uh, have an objective to actually uh, reduce crime in society. Uh, and for those people who have offended, to actually help them to not re-offend again. Uh, clearly, we need to, as a criminal justice system, we need to make sure that we make clear what behaviours are appropriate in society and what behaviours are not appropriate. That's quite clear. I mean, that's why we have laws to clear that. Uh, it is sad that we have so many laws these days that you think some behaviours which are inappropriate would be obviously inappropriate, but we actually need laws to, actually to remind some people that certain behaviours uh, are inappropriate and carry sanctions. Putting that issue aside for a moment, uh, Mr. Speaker, is that if we are to achieve uh, less crime, if we are to help people to not offend again and reduce the rate of reoffending, we need to make sure that our criminal justice system works fairly and, and, is, and is just. And by that I mean, Mr. Speaker, is that we need to understand what led to that behaviour and what will change that behaviour. Why there's generally a view that we need criminal justice systems to need to be punitive, I'm not sure that actually makes our community any safer. Punitive may, may exact, exact some revenge, etc., but I'm not sure in the long term it actually leads to be, uh, a safer community or better behaviours. And if you want a classic example of that would be the United States of America, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Acting Speaker, where their jails are full you know, to the rim, they have the one that they have the probably highest crime rate in the world, the highest incarceration rate in the world. You know, all indicated, which indicates that a system which doesn't work, but the Americans persist. I am hopeful that we never follow that sort of course of action, and that we actually have a better understanding on how to change people's behaviour for the better. And this is, I think, where is the context of where the Nunga courts come in, Mr. Mr. Acting Speaker. Nunga courts are about. Uh, not so much treating differently, but trying to treat appropriately 
um, people with, of, with a First Nations background to ensure that those who have actually entered the criminal justice system have pleaded guilty to an offence uh, actually are then um, brought before, if you like, uh, the Nunga Court for appropriate advice on what is the best sentencing. And that best sentencing must, um, in the main, and not, not solely but in the main, must be designed to actually prevent the reoffending. And that uh, I think it's appropriate that we understand the cultural context of that offending and also the cultural context which leads to changed behaviours. To do so, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, would just be purely punitive and seeks to punish people without the benefit of actually rehabilitation and actually minimising crime. So, Mr. Speaker, I think this, what we're doing here today is a good thing. Uh, we actually are. Uh, South Australia has led the way in the past in terms of Aboriginal sentencing court in 1999, and this bill enshrines it in law. The Nunga Court will deliver important justice outcomes, including improving trust in the justice systems amongst Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, including, uh, include, by including in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities in the sentencing process, and ensuring that sentencing processes deliver good outcomes for rehabilitation and reducing uh, reoffending. Mr. Speaker, some in the community may see this um, as a way of treating people differently, and that, and that certainly we may be treating people differently, but we treat people differently in a whole range of ways, in a whole range of contexts, because to treat them the same would be to be, would be create injustice, or to treat them the same would actually not get a good outcome for both the people involved in it, but also the community at large. And I think. Uh, this proposal actually improves it both for the individuals involved in the criminal justice system but also importantly for the community at large. Mr. S Mr. Speaker, as I, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, as I said, we need to make sure that our objectives are always to minimise crime and improve safety in our community, and we do that when people accept their responsibility in our society. Uh, what we are doing here, Mr. S Mr. Acting Speaker, is helping the Aboriginal community uh, make, make it very clear that uh, what behaviours are appropriate and inappropriate and, more importantly, lead to changes in those behaviour. In, very briefly, Mr Acting Speaker, the Nunga Court is, is an Aboriginal sentencing process in the Magistrates Court. Uh, the process is available to defendants who are uh, of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander background, have pleaded guilty to an offence and have applied to, the, to be sentenced in the Nunga Court. In sentencing the defendant, the Nunga Court must, may, must be assisted by one or more persons who, the, who are regarded by the defendant and accepted with the defendant's community as an elder or respected person or a person qualified to provide cultural advice on sentencing. Um, Mr Speaker, uh, I think this is a good thing. Uh, it may be something which, if not already done, we may to lead, need to look at in other cultural groups in our society to make sure that people, uh, again, understand the cultural context of certain behaviours. And if we're going to change behaviours for the better, we need to understand that cultural context and also help people to be, um, have the appropriate um, feedback from our court systems in that cultural context. Mr Speaker, um, it's very important that we, the community understands what this doesn't mean. What this doesn't mean is we're not actually are weakening our laws or we're giving people softer sentences, etc. What we are doing here is giving people the appropriate sentence to achieve a desired outcome. And Mr Speaker, that uh, the bill has been developed, as I understand it, in consultation with a whole range of stakeholders to make sure that it is, it is appropriate and is likely to work. And Mr Speaker, we do have to, as mentioned by the speakers, uh, need to find out ways, find out why and how we redress the overrepresentation of Aboriginal people in our criminal justice system. I think the figure is that uh, they represent 2.4 per cent of our population, yet are, are, represent 24 per cent, 24 per cent of the people in our criminal justice system. And Mr Speaker, I recall um, when I was uh, the, the Minister for Social Inclusion and when I had responsibility for looking after the youth detention centres, that one of the things which I will never forget 
is to see in the face of a 10-year-old child behind bars in our youth detention centre thinking this is not a way for civilised society to deal with children. A 10-year-old is a child uh, and yet they were behind bars in a detention centre because essentially society didn't know how to work out how to deal with this young person. Uh, and this probably is a story told many times for young offenders who are of Aboriginal or Torres Strait background. So we need to redress that. And as a number of speakers have said, we, if we don't redress that, we are carrying forward the injustices of the past to, to, to today and into the future. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, with those few comments, I would certainly support this bill and ask other members to support it as well.